Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alex and this is my second ever rapid reading wrap up. So the way that this works is for every book that I read in a month, I get one minute to talk about that book. So for the month of September, I read five books. So this is five books in five minutes. First up is Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson. This is a middle grade graphic novel that is the story of Astrid who decided to do roller derby camp over the course of the summer and she is forced to go without her best friend because her friend decided to do dance camp instead. She has a crisis of trying to figure out who she is without the friend that she does everything with while also participating in a sport that she's particularly bad at. I love this book because it's so real. Astrid is dealing with very complex emotions. She's only 12 12 years old. There's advice about how to effectively communicate both with people your own age and with your parents, not to mention that it demonstrates how hard it is to learn a new skill, that you're not going to become good at something overnight. I think it's impactful and meaningful and I gave this five stars. And then we have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This is the story of January who discovers that she has the ability to open up doors to magical worlds and that there is also a group of people who desperately don't want her to do that. So she has to try to fend off these powerful foes with the help of some friends as she attempts to find her missing father. I hate to say I was very disappointed by this book. Normally I don't read YA but the beginning of this book started out so strong. The language is beautiful beautiful, the descriptions are heartfelt, there were plot points that absolutely gutted me, but the turning point of this book was when we got to a pinnacle point and Harrow decided to make the story cheap. I don't want to spoil anything for you, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what she did, but I can say that there are very clear rules that are defined in this world and Harrow let January basically find a loophole and break one. And I hate that. So overall, I would say that the story is solid, but it's not good enough for me to recommend to anybody. So this is just getting a flat three stars. Third, though, we have a memory called Empire by Arkady Martin. This is the story of Mahit Desmer, who is the ambassador for Liesl Station to the Texcalanli Empire. She is summoned off planet to take the post of her predecessor who was murdered under mysterious circumstances, and when she arrives, she has to try to piece together why he died and who did it. It's a fast-paced book as it takes place over the course of only a week, but there is a really cool piece of technology in here that I love, and it's called an Imago. Imagos are these little devices that essentially let somebody create a perfect imprint of their mind, which can then be taken and surgically put into somebody else. The why of that, I will leave you to discover for yourself by reading this book. There are a lot of moving parts. This is definitely a political intrigue book. It's not normally the type of sci-fi that I would have read, but it was an excellent recommendation by Keaton, and I'm so glad that I read it. I gave it four and a half stars. The fourth book that I read this month is Frightful's Mountain by Jean Craighead George. This is a middle grade novel that is also the third book in a series, and it is about a falcon named Frightful who must learn to live in the wild on her own after only ever experiencing life as a trained bird. I have not read the other two books in the series. Keaton actually recommended that I read the third book first because that that was how he experienced it as a child, which was honestly a solid recommendation. I like that this was a story about Frightful learning how to be free and also having babies of her own to help with the peregrine falcon population crisis. It was very educational and I learned a lot. The first 70 pages are rough and quite choppy, but the book does progressively get better after that to the point where I really enjoyed the ending, but because of my change in opinion over the entirety of the book, I have to give this just three and a half stars. And last but most certainly not least is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is the story of Jason who is kidnapped by an alternate version of himself from a different timeline and forced out of his own world so that Jason too can take up his place. Our Jason must try to figure out how to get back to his reality while the perils he faces continue to escalate. I loved this book and Blake Crouch has now earned two five-star reviews for me out of two books so he has a hundred percent success rate. It's fast, it's shocking. I thought for sure that I knew where the story was going and I was completely wrong. It's also accessible and not overly technical, which I think makes it a great story for non-sci-fi readers who might be looking to get into sci-fi. It's really fun, but also kind of scary at times and definitely existential, but I personally love that blend and I gave this 
five stars. And those are the five books that I read this month, so thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, I would love to hear from you down in the comments. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening, that you all stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time. <music>